answers are inside Yeah, I am a 21st century superhuman Now, now, now is the time Come, come, come on everyone Let's celebrate, we are the children of the sun I can see you when I look into your eyes We are the same, and we are light, and yeah, we are one Here now, hear my ancient prayer and sing along We are awakening as one we can make a difference, yeah, we can be the change it takes to make the world a lot more fun. Well, if you're feeling kind of down and you need some inspiration to remember who you are, oh, now, child, please don't frown. You can choose a new vibration and these words can take you far. First century superhuman And I know that the answers are inside Hi there, ladies. How are you today? Hi, so good. So good. So happy to be here with you both. Good to see you, Cecily. I was noticing earlier, I love it, we have matching olive green shirts on. Very cute. Yes. <laughs> and Charmian. I'm doing great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good. And we love your background, and we know that you are attended by the masters and the angels. So we love seeing that behind you. So today we are going to talk about, and Charmian, I think you're going to lead us on this, the powerful energies of 8-8 eight, eight, and mm -hmm. how that's really pushing us to dig into our deepest wounds and to raise our consciousness. So... Charmian, we've done a few shows with you, and you one of them was on your near death experience. And we, and then it ended up being a second segment where you did a little channeling for us. So we love the connection that you have to the other side, and you bring through some really beautiful things. And Cecily, you're my dear friend of many years, and you are a practitioner of several different therapies that help people regress or go into the future, right? Yeah. And yes, one of them I, I learned from Charmian. Yeah. Yes. And so QHHT, which is kind of the more um, probably better known one, but what's the one called that you do with Charmian's work? Authentic Self Hypnosis Beautiful. or ASH. Ash. Yeah. And it's it's great. They're, they're both potent, hugely nice. potent. Yeah. So people can get a hold of you or they can get a hold of Charmian. And under this video, once we get it done, we'll put um, links to get a hold of everybody, be able to make contact. And I just like to mention my website, which is 21stCenturySuperhuman.com. And if you go there, you can become a free member. And also, please sign up for our email list. And we also invite you to follow our um, Twitch channel here. So um, become one of our followers, become one of our members, and there's so many exciting things that we're sharing these days in what we call the great shift of the ages, these times of great change where we are being pushed to grow into who we really are, who we're really designed to be as conscious, present, awake humans. So a very exciting time. Charmian, you want to go ahead and hop in and give wow. us your view on what's going on these days? It really is the great awakening. It is the shift of the ages, and it is the completion of all of our work here on the earth. Mm. So, oh yeah. we, we came, at the t Lemuria was the first civilization and it was out of time. We don't have a historical time. Oh, how For interesting. Out of time. So Lemuria didn't even exist in time. Uh, what it, when we first came in Lemuria, we were not in physical bodies. We were in our more light, etheric bodies. So we were not subject to 3D and to 
at time as we know it. And so Lemuria was very beautiful. We created these crystal cities, these temples, these palaces. We communicated with the extraterrestrials, with the mm. dolphins. Yes. And the time that is now known as paradise, the Garden of Eden, was really Lemuria. Mm. Soul group, soul choice, we decided to go through what we now call the fall, when we shut down our connection to our own divinity, we lost consciousness of who we are, and we've been through these hundreds of thousands of years of suffering and pain. Yes. <laughs> every, every conceivable uh, combination. We've all suffered loss, grief, hardship, painful death. That has been the school that Earth was fulfilling. It was actually our choice. There's a lot of misinformation out there about the fall was something that was done to us, that it shouldn't. Right. That's not my information. And Charmian, would you say, you know, these, would you say it's been multiple lifetimes for many of us, for many, uh, oh, multiple uh, lifetimes? Thousands, thousands. thousands. Wow. Yeah. And do you see a lot of those in your work, your self-hypnosis work? Yeah. We're dealing with the aftermath is <laughs> because we've experienced so much trauma that we carry with us in our cellular memory. Mm. It's a situation that might be in any way traumatic or threatening. Immediately, those alarm bells start ringing. Our programs get triggered and we go into either offense or defense. We, we are very reactive because these old wounds are triggered, times when we've been manipulated and controlled. Yes, and I even call that we go into our reptilian brain, so we're not as, we maybe have a little PTSD, we maybe have a little cognitive dissonance, so we when we bump up against those old traumas um, and they're kind of getting replayed again, I think one of the important things to remember is how do we process and clear those? And Seth, you might want to jump in and share a little bit too if you have any thoughts. Or if not, well, actually, yeah, go ahead. I mean, I could share something, but this is, um, I read the most beautiful story last night um, about a man who's a firefighter and he knew how to work with PTSD and how you can actually um, circumvent the person having the PTSD by when they're in the moment of trauma, being with them and holding them and saying, I'm here, I'm with mm. you. And then their body doesn't go into that loop that's really hard to get rid of once they have it going. Beautiful. So yes. giving someone actual physical comfort. Um, yes. I know Tony Robbins would kind of say the opposite because I worked with him a lot of years and he said, you don't want to anchor people into their trauma. But I love what this guy's saying, that you can comfort someone and help them begin feeling safe enough to maybe free themselves from their trauma. Mm -hmm. That's that's what he said, yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Do it in the right way. <laughs> so Go ahead, you, give us some insights on that, Charmian. You don't, they don't perceive you as a threat. You've got to speak very gently, speak yeah. very gently, approach them very carefully. Because at my husband here in America, when I first came to America, I was... Charmian, you're dropping out just little blips. So speak up a little bit. And um, it's funny, I think you, I think the technology just glitches on you because your frequency is so high. I am sure <laughs> of it. So I'm just going to say, breathe and be here in this dimension with us so that we can pick you up with the technology. I turned up my volume. Okay. Is that it's good. It's, yeah. So uh, I, I lived with uh, my, my husband in America many years ago, was a Marine who's, who'd been in Vietnam. Oh, wow. Very severe P PTSD. Yes. Towards him to hug him, he would just freeze because. Mm alarm system so what Cecily and I do is we pick up the pieces um, 
authentic self-hypnosis is that we take people into first connecting with their whole, complete, perfect, divine self that doesn't have any vision. And then we bring that golden, shining one into the physical body and we use that energy to go into those shadows and release those memories one by one so we don't have to carry them it's um what we actually do is called is that that part of the journey is called soul retrieval Mm. we live every trauma i used to do a lot of just simple regression where I took people back to the trauma and I found that people were getting traumatized just by remembering it. Wow. I asked my guides, I need a different way here. Very so what we, now, we go in and we do a soul retrieval where we just bring the wounded part back into the soul without having to know all the gory details of what exactly happened beautiful and they're they're always lying on the floor and they're sad and they're lonely and they're afraid and we just pick them up bring them up out of the darkness into the light and reintegrate them into ourselves nice so tell us about 8-8 because we just went through of course we're in september so 8-8 was in august a month ago and this time comes every year right the lion's gate the 8-8 portal, because we're lined up, you know, correct me if you see it differently, but we're lined up with the great central sun, Alcyone, that our whole galaxy um, orbits around. And because we're on that uh, line or that trajectory, everything is more activated. Is that right? And it aligns with Sirius, the line Okay. Gate. Serious, and what it did was ripped a band-aid off the wounds that we've been uh, muddling along with. I mean, wow. it's really that we're all up and functioning. When you see the wounds that people carry, you think, "My God, how are you even upright and walking?" Yes. So we need to congratulate ourselves that we we are managing, we're breathing, we're living a life and uh, we're not completely controlled by our wounds. But what the Lionsgate, the 8-8 portal did this year especially was very powerful, that it it opened up the next layer of the wounding. Because told is that it lifted the earth into the next octave of, Mm. which means that another layer of our deepest, darkest wounds was made available and the way it works is that people in your life that you are contracted with to push your buttons to show you where the wounding is they show up and you get triggered Mm -hmm. this is a bad thing and these people are being very mean in fact it's a good thing and these are the people you should be saying, thank you very much, teacher. Right. We need to know what's the house. So, um, go ahead, finish your thought, because I don't want to interrupt you. It's all what is hidden. That's where our triggers are. They're not in our conscious mind. They're in our subconscious memory from thousands of years ago a lot of memories of atlantis have been coming up in my sessions in wow because we were also traumatized then right and you feel like people were being traumatized at the collapse of atlantis basically that's the and a lot of light workers especially yes healers and the channelers the mystics the seers because we were the atlanteans who were called the atla Ra, mm. one. We we only knew oneness, harmony, love, equality, truth, and then there were these other group called the Sons of Balliol who wanted power for self, wealth, and personal status. Right. So we're kind of in that same comparable frequency now, wouldn't you say? 
exactly the same people are here. They've incarnated now as bankers and politicians. Then they were priests, and uh, and they just they took hold of our. They got hold of our crystal grid. They got control of these massive crystals, size of a house, and they ran too much energy through it because they wanted more and more and more. Right. We said to them, if you keep doing that, you're going to overload the system and it's going to blow out. And that's what happened. The system was overloaded. Massive earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunamis, everything. And Atlantis sunk. And a lot of the, the light workers are holding guilt from that time and helplessness, disempowerment, because we tried to stop it. Yes. That's interesting. Guilt and disempowerment. That's really interesting. I know, Cecily, your your birthday is kind of near 8-8. My husband's birthday is kind of near 8-8. He's been going through a lot, you know, of kind of like finding himself in his own ashes. You know, that's how he talks about it in the healing process that he's in. But he's been out flat for weeks. And um, I think... You know, like you said, I think this pressure to uh, deepen our uh, our our growth, our connection with ourselves, with each other, um, our memory to to connect with those memories of that darkness that we've struggled with for so long. Well, the other side of that, what opened up on 8-8 when we went into the next octave, is that the frequencies are now, now so high, which means the veils are thin. It's very easy to connect to the divine self, and that's where the healing comes from. You only go through the darkness to reach the light. You don't mm. stay like the phoenix eventually you rise from the ashes so that's an extremely good description of what is happening beautiful says how about you are you experiencing this acceleration well last weekend two weekends ago there was this huge influx of energy yeah it's i've been experiencing it a lot of people were just laid flat with that energy i i felt like there was something twirling around inside my body and I couldn't drink enough water and but slowly you know somehow I I managed to get feel better um back to Atlantis like my whole life I've been fascinated with Atlantis right like and I still constantly watch videos about it and Lemuria and I've read some really amazing books um and do you remember Eric Berglund our friend in yes. um, Shasta mm -hmm. the beautiful musician? He said to me, because I always asked him about it, and he told me that, yes, what Charmian said, they're all here. We're all here again, doing the exact same thing. But the lesson we need to learn is to merge the heart and the mind. Mm -hmm, beautiful. Yeah, because that's where the split was before. Right. And really, wasn't Lemuria a heart-centered civilization? And then Atlantean, Atlantis was very mental like the and we're all very mental the modern white man's world so to speak is also very mental mm -hmm. and so we're having to remember how important it is to merge mind rational logical uh technological with the heart and the energy of the mother right yeah so then it can serve in the right way and we go in the right direction rather than the wrong directions which yes yeah. Because I believe, Charmian, what do you think, um, that we are in the midst of restoring the paradise? We're in the midst of, of accessing, of grounding. I don't know if grounding is the right word, but manifesting new earth, a new earth civilization that is founded in love. Absolutely, and uh, this is why we're all back. Every, the reason there are so many people on this planet is that everyone who's ever been here is here for the grand finale, the yes. celebration. This time there will not be a destruction. Mother Earth, Gaia has said, this, that was it. We're, I'm not doing that again. So now, fortunately for us, the plan always was 
that we started in oneness, we went into two-ness, but then we came back to oneness. And fortunately for us, we're at that end now, where we are returning to the oneness. And as you say, it's all about the heart. In Atlantis, it was mind and will. Mm. Was, of course. Lemuria was heart and uh, belly, the emotional, the gut, the, mm. the feeling energy. So now we've got to bring all of that together. We've got to make the mind follow the heart. Beautiful. That is really important. I know the Heart Math Institute, and I write about this in my books, the 21st Century Superhuman Book Series, I talk about it a lot. The Heart Math Institute has come up with, when we are in love, compassion, and gratitude, we actually, when we're in that state, we go into heart coherence, and we begin opening up more of our DNA, and we begin shifting what we're creating in this world. So I love that, what you said, that now the mind has to learn to follow the heart, you know? And I think we can have that filter. Am I in with the choices I'm making? What do I want to, what do I want to accomplish? What I'm driven towards? Can we do it through love, compassion, and gratitude? That's right. And that's what we find in our work all the time with the hypnosis that Ceci and I do is that everything that's happening planet in your life is part of the plan that is giving you the opportunity to raise your vibration so sometimes it comes in the form of opposition and challenges so instead of fighting back you say why do i need this what is it showing me what is the opportunity here rather than how can I get this out of my life at ASAP. Beautiful. Lesson. Yes, and I, I believe we go inside ourselves. You know, we say, what am I to become aware of here? Not what is that other person doing to me, but what frequency is being brought up for me to, um, to become aware of, to shift inside myself, to become more loving in relationship to? Absolutely. Just look into your own life and let love be the answer. Yes. Who are hurting and they're lashing out. Yes. Asking for love. They just don't know how to do it. So they, they go to their uh, go to, which is coming out fighting which actually have the opposite effects of what they really want. So in our, in our hypnosis, we always look at the bigger picture and we look at the soul contract, what is really happening, why is this person doing this to me? Right. Hey, thank you very much, got that memo, got the lesson, don't need you in my life anymore, thank you and goodbye. Right, or that situation situation yes you see a lot of the the games that we're playing out now especially in our relationships and our marriages and our partnerships are actually karmic completions yes and i think there's a lot of karmic completions going on right now don't you because we're going out of time karma is love that the fourth dimension and the third dimension it doesn't exist in the fifth dimension. Right. We, so this is the last lifetime that we can complete karma. Mm. I'm not coming back. Uh, in fact, very, none of us are coming back because what we're actually doing and what the ascension is, as far as I can understand it, what I've experienced, bringing all of our golden shining super being here into a physical form so we'll still be in bodies but not the same we won't, be, we won't be deteriorating we won't die of our bodies just wearing out but we'll be living from the consciousness that is eternal and Gorgeous. then is complete 
we either stay and live on the earth in paradise or we say, okay, I'm going home. I Isn't love it? that. Beautiful. So, you need to have fear. And fear is being triggered from the past. Ah. So many lifetimes where we did need to be afraid, be very afraid. Mm -hmm. we, wars, plagues, famines, uh, loss of loved ones, or just, just every conceivable tragedy that the earth can throw at us, we are all carrying. Yes. So we need to throw off those veils that are keeping us in suffering, in grief, in anger, in resentment. It's all old stuff. It's not about what's happening now. People, there's a lot of very angry people on this planet. Yes. Old anger. Old anger. Yes, that's it. Old. And so the Great Awakening is about becoming aware that we need to clear, we need to step into a higher consciousness way of relating to things. How about you, Seth? What are you experiencing as far as, or do you feel like a journey that you've been in as far as clearing old karma and kind of going through phases and... It's been a lifetime. It it's been a lifetime of clearing karma, I would say, you know. Yes. Um, just with my relationships and everything, I've just always felt like there's always been a karma to clear. But what I was thinking of as soon as you were talking about old karma, it's like we're lucky because we live in a new country, but um, if people live in old places with old vendettas and old history and all that programming that they're given since the day they were born, for them it's like, it's monumental. It's a huge thing for them to just offload all that stuff. And so I think that's harder for people um, from very old cultures to do, you know. Interesting. Have you worked with some people from older cultures? Um, yes, I have. But I also know, and yes, I have their friends. And also I've worked with them. And also I've worked with other people from old cultures. And I, I just know that you know, they have, like, they literally incarnate into each other's families over and over. And, like, they know who who the grandma became. They know, right. know which kid, right? So I they know. are so entwined, right? Because you are you have a Lebanese background, right? right? So you know what I'm talking about. But I also know I can look at my family and, you know, who came in where and who's continuing yeah. where. And it becomes pretty clear. When, you've also traveled and lived in some really old cultures, such as Bali and India. Yeah. And so you've been immersed in that um, world to feel those differences, too. Yeah. Like, I met a kid. He was not even five. And he was wiser than anybody I've ever met. Wow. Ever. Yeah. They just, they come in like that. And they're the... It's different over there. They're never shut down in any way spiritually, which I think is amazing. Right. And I, I also feel that we incarnate by choice into a certain culture, a certain family structure, into certain lessons. We say, okay, I'm willing to take that on because that's what I need to work on this lifetime or that's what I need yeah. to clear. I have karmic agreements to clear things. And maybe this is the place where I can incarnate and I'll be able to do the work that I'm coming in to do also. That's part of what we do in the authentic self-hypnosis. We go to the time before birth. Wow, we, wonderful. We go through a death and we experience the afterlife and that's quite, a, 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 that changes your consciousness. Boy, you, I'll bet experience i mean we all know there's life after death but when you actually go there it does totally change your life view and then uh, we go to the planning group uh, with all our soul family and we do exactly what you just said i, well, I want to learn this so who's going to sh show up and play my persecutor who's going to be my supporters who's going to be my mother, my father. So a lot of our script is actually written long, long, long before we became aware of our story as it unfolds. But it's not written in stone. This is the thing, is you can change that script. And we do this in the sessions. You That's can go great. 
owns the contract. Nice. I like that. Because as we become more conscious and aware, we maybe outgrow our need to keep playing certain things over and over. And for myself, I'm really done with it. Thank God. I put it out there. I'm not available for karmic completion anymore. Mm. I want to keep reading all my failed relationships for that one of so I just put it out there. I forgive everybody for anything they've ever done to me. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. So I love you. I bless you. Thank you and goodbye. Beautiful. Because it's been a pretty, it's been a pretty difficult life, and this is why many of us have had multiple marriages. Right. Related. People say to me, oh, you just keep making bad choices. Oh, oh, you keep marrying your father. Well, that's only the world down here view. Right. When you the eagle eye view, I know the soul contracts of every single one of those was a karmic completion. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And I love what you shared from your near-death experience, too, that when we get over to the other side, there really is no judgment on us. There's, we have our own review, but there's really no judgment, no punishment. Nobody sitting in judgment of you except yourself. Right. Only well to guide you and help you well and to assess how well you did with the life and whether your plans were completed and whether your lesson was learned they help you look over all of that but they don't so it's very important to notice what you're doing now everybody sends out a ripple yes like the frog's leg kicking in the pond i always say we send out our ripple into creation and say, what am I sending out? Is it healing? Is it building the love energy on the planet? Beautiful. Or fear and anger. Right. And you fear and the anger, no matter the justification, that is not the way to make change. I agree. The way that we want it, which is always to build more love. Yes. I mean, we can even look at global events and television news broadcasting that, um, or that stimulates people to become angry or become in fear. And we need to rise above that, too. I do other shows where we talk about that. How do we change our attitude and our energy to what we see going on in the world around us on a greater scale besides just our personal life? Because the beings who were manipulating us in Atlantis and who are back here now want us to be in fear and anger. Yes. That's how they control us. Right. So be very careful because they're very clever and they wrap it up in words that make you think, well, that's not right. Your freedoms are being taken away. That's not right. So you have to really listen yes act on your heart right that information that you're buying into especially all like the conspiracy stuff right manipulating the light workers the people who are conscious are being completely uh, what i was told it's a distraction absolutely yes it was intended to allow them to stay in control and for us to be disempowered. Right. Everybody that's telling you you need to be afraid uh, is not telling you the truth. That's correct. Empowered. Yes, yes, yes. You are, you are. That's all you have to do is to experience all of yourself. So at some point we can do a little meditation and coaching. That would be wonderful. I, w we were really honored to have you with us, Charmian, and um, your wisdom, your insights of many years and multidimensionally. Maybe we can close with a little um, meditation or something to help the people that are struggling right now 
to with this extra push that's going on to come into a more um, balanced peaceful um, state of relief kind of before you start Sess, do you have some things you'd like to add to our um, our journey of conversation here I'm flying high when Charmian talks I'm just flying high I'm good <laughs> I you, know though. she really puts us into an altered state too I, I think know. which is very nice and um, <laughs> her way of bringing through information is very um, soothing to the soul very yeah. Yes, and so we're happy to be here with you, Charmian. Um, go ahead and lead us in a little, um, a little meditation for helping people get through the things that they're struggling with at this point. Well, the Council of Light from Sirius, who are very much connected, they were the ones who were working in Egypt and Atlantis and the world. We've always been guided by the beings from Sirius. And so they they are the ones that were that opened the lion's gate. And they they want to uh, offer us some guidance. Beloved brothers and sisters of the earth plane, we bow before you. We bow at your feet because you are the ones who have carried the burden, the shadow, the darkness of this earth from life to life, no matter what you experienced in terms of suffering and pain, you have always returned. You have always carried the flame through the times of darkness. And this was the agreement that was made with the children of the light, the children of the sun, that there would always be enough bodies on the earth holding the light so that all would not be lost. Many times you have held that light in the face of great adversity and you have suffered because of that. We come this day to bring you the message. Your suffering has not been in vain. The light has persisted on the earth because of you. And now we come to offer you release from the burdens that you have carried. It is time to lay them down and to be lifted up into the light from which you came, the light that is the truth of your being. So we would like you now to just imagine that you are standing on a beach of pure white sand, gazing out across an aqua blue ocean. The golden sun is sparkling on the water. The warm ocean breeze blows over you. A soft, gentle breath, soothing all of your anxieties, your fears, your worries. As you gaze across the water, there is a sound of chirping, whistling. And here, swimming towards you, are a whole pod of dolphins, your brothers and sisters from Sirius. They invite you 
to step down into the warm waters of the ocean and to swim with them. So you, you walk down into the warm, soothing waters of the lagoon and you begin to swim with your dolphin pod. They swim on either side of you and each one looks into your eye as it passes by. And as you gaze into those beautiful golden eyes that are completely conscious, you are remembering the truth of yourself. As you swim out into the ocean, there is a brilliant shining light in front of you. Above the surface of the ocean is rising a crystal temple shining in the light of the sun. This ancient and holy place lights up your soul. It's very well known to you from your beginnings here on the earth in the land of Nu, time of Lemuri. So you swim into that crystal temple through the entrance underneath the ocean. And you find yourself emerging into this brilliant light. As the light pours in through the sides, the clear crystal walls of the temple, and the temple is filled with light. In the middle of the temple is a very tall, powerful, single crystal that is radiating with the light and the power of the sun. You step into this crystal as you have done many times before in the land of Mu when you wish to be reconnected restored and revitalized. This is where you came to reconnect to the source. So as you step into the light of that crystal, you find yourself dissolving, simply disappearing into the light, floating in this vast ocean of love, of light, which is the source from which you were created, from which your soul was born. And as you merge with the source, all of those burdens, those wounds, the hungry mouths that have been crying in the darkness, all of that simply drops away because here in the oneness there is only love. So all of your past, your traumas, your present, your worries, your fears, fears for the future, simply allow them to dissolve in the light with no effort. Simply let them go. Because here is the truth of who you are. Feel the consciousness that you have as the being, the eternal one. 
the one who knows all, who sees all, who is all. Feel that consciousness. Know yourself as you truly are. Feel the qualities of this consciousness. What message does your eternal divine self have for the personality that is walking the earth walk at this time? As you return here to the source, all of your light code for reconnection, your own divine essence are being reactivated now. The light codes that have been dormant in your DNA for you to walk this earth as a living master. Feel those light codes being activated now. As you move forward into the new earth, it will be as your divine self. So feel that consciousness that simply watches, that looks beneath the surface, see the truth of what is really being played out. The part of you that sees every challenge as opportunity to rise higher, to become stronger, more connected to your own eternal self. This one knows the plan for your life. Every minute of your life is being directed by your soul simply to wake you up. Whatever dramas, whatever challenges come towards you, it is your soul saying it's time to wake up now. So allow yourself to awaken from the dream that suffering and separation are at all necessary. That is the illusion. It is time now to live joy, love, light, harmony. So feel this consciousness that is your own divine self. The one who knows who they are, what the plan is both for yourself, for your loved ones and for this earth. There is nothing happening here on the earth plane that is not in the divine plan. The shadows are being revealed so that they can be released. So don't get drawn in to the story. Be a part of the healing, the renewal, the explosion of love 
love revolution, we call it. So now bring this consciousness to the place, to the body that is the temple, that is the house, that is the vessel at this time for all of your magnificent divine essence. Simply offer yourself your life as the vessel for your own soul to fulfill your purpose in the great awakening. We leave you now with the love and the blessing of the one. Go in peace. Go with God and blessed be. As we have spoken, so it is. Mm, thank you so much for that beautiful healing meditation from Source. And I just want to remind everyone to breathe, smile, and love. For by so doing, we change ourselves and we change the world. Contact info for Cecily and for Charmian will be under the video wherever you find it. And we're going to play our outro song. And Charmian and Sess, if you just wait around, we'll talk for a minute afterwards. Sending much love to all. It's beautiful. Here we go. And if you're feeling kind of down and you need some inspiration to remember who you are. Whoa, now, child, please don't frown. You can choose a new vibration and these words can take you far. First century superhuman and I know that the answers are inside I am 21st century superhuman now now